Hey guys, today we'll be taking a look at the latest polls that have been released for the 2022 Senate races, specifically in the key states, the key states that will really matter this November in deciding the balance of power after the 2022 midterm elections. So now we are just less than five months away from the election in November, and we have already had many of these key races see the primaries already happen, so we know for sure who the candidates are going to be on the ballot in many of those key states. So I'm going to start off by filling in the solid and likely states on this map here. So these are the states that really we do not need to talk too much about. There's been pretty much no polling in the states because the incumbent party is pretty much going to win their re-election in all of these states. We do have a special election in Oklahoma, but of course Oklahoma is typically a state in which the GOP wins every single county in, so there really is not too much to discuss there. Jim Imhoff is going to be replaced by another Republican. And so here we have the eight toss-up races that are going to decide the makeup of the U.S. Senate. Four are held by the Democrats, four are held by the Republicans. Democrats have incumbents in the states of Nevada, Arizona, New Hampshire, and Georgia, while Republicans have incumbents in Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. And so with the states, we have retiring incumbents in the states of Pennsylvania, Ohio, and North Carolina, Pat Toomey in Pennsylvania, Rob Portman in Ohio, and Richard Burr in North Carolina are all retiring in 2023. So that is why you had both Democratic and Republican primaries that were competitive in these three states. The candidates have already been chosen for all three of these races, so we will go over these in just a few moments here. But in all of these other states, the incumbents are running for their re-elections, and many of them are pretty vulnerable going into the election this November. So I'm going to start off by taking a look at the latest polls released from the state of Nevada. In the state of Nevada, or not at Nevada, Arizona, but in the state of Arizona, Mark Kelly will be running for his re-election. He is currently the presumptive Democratic nominee. That's because nobody else is running against him. While on the Republican side, there is pretty much a three-way race between Mark Bronovich, Jim Lamont, and Blake Masters. Blake Masters, however, has recently received the endorsement of Donald Trump in early June. So basically when this poll was administered. And so with that, I do expect Masters numbers to increase. However, this is still going to be a very competitive race. The primary is not until August. The 2nd of August is when the primary in Arizona is set to happen as you can see right here and so we have uh, quite a few competitive primaries in the state of Arizona but for Blake Masters he is a relatively weak candidate he polls pretty weak against Mark Kelly and he has been criticized a lot and Trump's choice has been criticized a lot for supporting him so I think that Blake Masters is a flawed nominee if the Republicans were to choose him. However, as of right now, that seems to be the trajectory that we are going in. Blake Masters really did not lead in that many polls until recently, uh, and so I think that with Trump's endorsement, he really is going to see his numbers go up more than they ever did before. And this is reminiscent of what we saw in Ohio when Donald Trump endorsed J.D. Vance before his primary, and that was really what boosted him to the top over the finish line. And so looking at the latest polls between the three frontrunners in the GOP primary at, against Mark Kelly, you will see that Mark Kelly has led in every single poll that has been released in the 2022 election cycle. You see that in the latest polls released between Kelly and Masters, Kelly leads by 16, 13 against Lamont, and 17 against Bronovich. So basically, Mark Kelly is in a very good position going into his re-election. He is a lot more popular than other Democratic officials in the state, specifically Kirsten Sinema, who will be up for re-election in 2024. And so Mark Kelly, if you look at his polling numbers, he polls at around 50%, very close 50% in most of the polls that have been released, while his opponents are in the mid-30s in this one for Mark Bonovich, where he is up in the high 40s. So I think that Mark Kelly right now is in a good position, but once the GOP does get a nominee, the race will tighten up as there will be less voters who are undecided once the Republicans actually pick a nominee. I think that right now, 
all three of these potential Republican candidates are pretty much unknown, and even in the state, they are not uh, very big names. So I do think that the numbers will improve for the GOP here, but right now I do think that it is undeniable that Mark Kelly is in a relatively good spot going into his re-election effort. He, of course, was only elected in 2020 in that special election where he defeated incumbent Martha McSally by a margin of 2.4%. This was much larger than Joe Biden's margin in the state of Arizona on the presidential level, but Mark Kelly's win in 2020 did come in an election where the Democrats had a pretty good showing, although not as well as they expected. The Democratic Party still did relatively well, and you do have to keep in mind that going into Mark Kelly's race in 2020, Mark Kelly was leading by larger margin, was leading by a pretty significant margin. He did still underperform. He led by a pretty significant margin throughout the entire campaign, and so even though he is leading by a better margin right now, we will have to see what happens after the Republicans do decide on a nominee. And so the next thing I want to take a look at is the state of Nevada. We have another vulnerable Democratic incumbent. I think that Mark Kelly is still vulnerable to a very large extent, much more than basically any other senators on this map, with the exception of Catherine Cordes Masto and Raphael Warnock that are in Georgia. But I do think that as of right now, in terms of, you know, with relative to how close Arizona is going to be and how close it has been in the last couple elections, I think that Mark Kelly is doing relatively well. So looking at the state of Nevada, Catherine Cordes Masto will be running for her re-election. She was first elected in 2016 to replace Harry Reid, who retired after being the Senate Majority Leader and Democratic Leader in the Senate for many years. Um, he has recently passed away, though. So, uh, But looking at the Republican side here, Adam Luxalt is the current frontrunner. He did run against Steve Sislak for governor in 2018. This time, he will be running for the Senate. And if you look at the polling for the GOP primary here, Adam Luxalt at 51.3% on average, according to RCB. He leads by 21%. Sam Brown is really the only other major candidate in this race. His numbers have been increasing a little bit over over the last couple of months. However, this primary is on the 14th of June, so I don't expect him to have the time to be able to pick up the support that he needs to actually defeat Luxalt. I think that if you gave him a few more months, definitely Luxalt, there's a possibility that he could have been knocked down, but with the primary in just a couple of days, I find that to be very, very unlikely. So Adam Luxalt basically right now has a 96% chance of winning the nomination. So it will basically be Adam Luxalt against Catherine Cortez Masto. And if you do look at the latest polls between them, you will see that it is pretty much a big mess here. The latest poll does show Cortez Masto up 21%, although that is a huge outlier if you look at the other polls that have been released. Look, Salt has led in most of them, although some of them have been funded by the GOP or they have been campaign polls for Adam Luxalt himself. So we really will just have to see what happens in the next couple of months here, what polls come out to get a better picture of this race. But right now, with the national environment favoring the GOP and many of these polls favoring Luxalt over incumbent Cortez Masto, I do think that Adam Luxalt does go into the race this November with a very slight advantage. So I am going to categorize Nevada as being tilt currently for the Republican Party. The next thing I want to talk about is the state of Wisconsin. Ron Johnson is going to be running for his re-election. He did announce in 2016 that he was not going to run for a third term this November, but he has since changed his mind. In Wisconsin, I think that he has a very good chance at winning his re-election. Uh, he is not relatively popular or relatively unpopular either, so I think that he is not going to have too hard of a time getting reelected in 2022, a year that heavily will favor the Republican Party in a state that is trending more and more to the right. And if you look at the Republican or if you look at the Democratic Party here, Mandela Barnes is the current frontrunner. I do expect him to end up winning the nomination. If you do look at the latest polls, he has led in every single poll that has been released. Mandela Barnes is the current lieutenant governor alongside Tony Evers. However, he will not be running for his re-election, of course, to that position as he is challenging Ron Johnson. And the primary in Wisconsin will occur on the 9th of August. So we do have a few more months there, but I don't expect too much to change. I think Mandela Barnes will win a plurality of the vote in August to win the Democratic nomination. And so looking at the polls in Wisconsin, there really have not been too many. 
In terms of polls between Johnson and Barnes, there's only been one, and that was released in September of last year, showing them at an even position. And this was a poll funded by the Barnes campaign, and so obviously this would favor Mandela Barnes over Ron Johnson. Also, this was all the way back in September, where the Democratic Party was in better standing. So I do think that Mandela Barnes is currently expected to lose. I think that Ron Johnson has a pretty good shot at winning his re-election at this point in time. The next thing I want to move on to is the state of Ohio. I think this is going to be one of the most surprisingly close races of this election cycle. The race will be between J.D. Vance and Tim Ryan. J.D. Vance won around 33% of his primary, while Tim Ryan, I believe, won around 70% of the Democratic primary. And of course, there were two primary, two major primaries here because Rob Portman is going to be retiring. Rob Portman was elected by an over 20% margin in 2016. And so looking at this race, Tim Ryan has actually led in most of the polls that have been released. Many of them, though, have been Democratic funded. And so I do think that obviously will give him a little bit of an advantage here. This one poll with Amy Acton, don't count that one. That was all the way back in March before the primary when she was still in the race. But looking at these top couple of polls with Tim Ryan against J.D. Vance, you'll see that Tim Ryan is polling relatively well. He is, I think, the best nominee Democrats could have chosen for this race. J.D. Vance, I don't think, is a good nominee at all. I think the Republicans have had some pretty bad nominees this election cycle. And so Tim Ryan polling this well in Ohio, a state that Trump won by 8% both times. I think that Tim Ryan will do relatively well, considering that he is a Democrat. You do have to remember that in 2020, or not, in 2018, Ohio did re-elect Sherrod Brown by a seven-point margin, so it is very possible for a Democrat to win in this race. But right now, I'm going to categorize it as being tilled for the Republican Party. I do think, of course, that in the end, there's a very good chance that J.D. Vance wins by a little bit of a larger margin than 1%, but I'm using this uh, pretty subjectively. I think that the race will still be pretty close, and I will not be surprised if Ohio is in fact closer than states like Wisconsin or Arizona. I do think that with a good candidate on the Democratic side, I do think that Tim Ryan can do relatively well in this race. And the next state I will be moving on to is, of course, the state of Pennsylvania. The primary here did essentially end at this point. Mehmet Oz did come out on top, and he will be running against John Fetterman for the Senate seat in Pennsylvania due to the retirement of incumbent Pat Toomey. And so there really have been no polls released for this race. I think that Mehmet Oz is significantly weaker as a candidate against John Fetterman. The fact that he only got a third of support from his primary also shows that he will have a lot of work uh, uniting the Republican Party in Pennsylvania. And so looking at the latest poll that has been released, there's really only been one released in December of last year. This was funded by the Fetterman campaign, showing Fetterman up two points. This is right after Oz announced his campaign. So this really does not tell us too much about this race, but I do think that as of right now, John Fetterman does have a slight advantage going into the election in November. I do think that the Democratic Party has a very good chance at flipping Pennsylvania. This really is the only state that they have any significant chance of flipping. And so moving up north to the state of New Hampshire, in the state of New Hampshire, we have a pretty interesting race here. So on the Democratic side, of course, Maggie Hassan will be renominated, while on the Republican side, there is a pretty muddled primary here. And this one poll does show Donald Bolde with 33%. And every other candidate at less than five, but I really doubt the legitimacy of this poll. If you look at the betting odds for this race, you'll see that Chuck Morse does have the highest chance of winning, but Donald Boldo still does have a 32% chance of winning the nomination. And so looking at the latest polls between Maggie Hassan and Donald Boldo, who is currently second place uh, in terms of his chances of winning, Hassan is up four on average, and against Chuck Morse, Hassan is up 4.3. There was one poll that did show Chuck Morse leading against it's Maggie Hassan. However, Maggie Hassan has pretty, um, he, she's pretty consistently led in every single poll that has been released for this race. So I do think that Maggie Hassan does go into the, the race in a good position. Of course, Chris Sununu is running for his re-election as governor, so he will not be challenging Hassan. That really did save her campaign. I think that if Sununu ran against Hassan, it would be a definite Sununu victory. But for Maggie Hassan, I do think that she is still a relatively strong candidate. She did defeat a Republican incumbent in 2016, and so in 2022, I think that this race can get 
pretty close just because of the national environment. But I do think that Maggie Hassan has the clear edge here in the state of New Hampshire. There's been surprisingly a lot of polling done for this race. And so moving down south, we have two final states, the states of North Carolina and Georgia. In the state of North Carolina, of course, Sherry Beasley was nominated to run against Ted Budd uh, for the Republicans. We have Ted Budd. Beasley on the Democratic side, and this, of course, is to replace Richard Byrd, the retiring Republican incumbent. And so looking at the latest polls between these two individuals, you do have a little bit of a graph here on 538, uh, because there's been extensive polling, or not extensive polling, but there's been a lot of recent polling for this race, and we have the candidates already chosen. So between Ted Budd and Sharon Beasley, five-point edge right now for Ted Budd. I think that that is a pretty good indicator of where this race is going to go. Sherry Beasley does not really stand too much of a chance at this point in time. And so I, I do think that in the end she is going to lose against Ted Budd. Although this race can still be relatively close, it is still North Carolina a state that does favor the Republicans, but still is pretty much a toss-up race in most elections. I think that Ted Budd is going to win, but Sherry Beasley, I think it will still stay neck and neck with him in the polls until the very end in November. So I will categorize the state of North Carolina as being lean for the Republicans. And finally, in the state of Georgia, Ralph Lane Warnock will be running for his re-election. He was also elected in the 2020 special election alongside Mark Kelly, where he defeated Kelly Leffler with 51% in the runoff. So in 2022, Herschel Walker is the Republican nominee. He was recently nominated by the GOP. He has Trump's full support. He even has support for Mitch McConnell. I think that Herschel Walker uh, himself is a pretty weak candidate. He has said some pretty questionable things on the campaign trail so far, and I think that the Democrats will do their best to expose that, but Georgia is still a state that voted for Donald Trump by almost 5% in the 2016 election. This state only went blue in 2020, it, the first time since 1992 on the presidential level and even longer on the Senate level. And of course, Warnock and Ossoff were elected to the Senate in Georgia in that runoff earlier last year after a huge wave of momentum with Joe Biden winning the state. And these two states were the two states that Democrats needed to flip the Senate, if you don't remember, in 2020. The two, the two elections in Georgia really did decide and give the Democrats the majority in the Senate, and so that's why these races were so important, and that really drove out Democratic turnout. Now, in 2022, with the national environment and the Democrats being so disapproved of, they're really not going to get that sort of enthusiasm and get their voters out like they were able to previously. So in 2022, I do think that Raphael Warnock is going to be very, very vulnerable. I think that in terms of the four incumbents in these four key races for the Democrats that they have to defend, I think that by far, Catherine Cortez Masto and Raphael Warnock are the two most vulnerable ones, and I think that Maggie Hassan is the least, while Mark Kelly comes in third in terms of being vulnerable for a Democratic incumbent. And the rest of them, of course, I think are going to pretty easily win their re-elections. Even in Colorado, Michael Bennett, he really does not have too much of a chance in terms of losing his race. So looking at the polls in Georgia, you will see that Herschel Walker has led in most of the recent polls. The only recent poll in which Warnock has led in is the most recent one, conducted in late April, where he was up by five. I think these numbers are obviously very bad for Raphael Warnock if he wants to win his re-election. He was leading in the polls against Kelly Loeffler going into the race. The polls in Georgia have been relatively accurate, so I do think that it will be very concerning if Warnock is still down in the polls like this come November of this year. So I will categorize the state of Georgia as being lean for the Republicans as well. Give them 51-49 for the Democrats. This isn't really my prediction. This is more of what I think the polls are telling us about each of these races. I think that right now the Republicans are are going into the midterms in a good spot. I think the Democrats have a lot of work to do. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to join my Discord server if you have not linked at the very top of the description below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below which races you are watching as well as whether or not you agree with these projections here. Subscribe to our channel if you have not. And I will see you guys in the next video.